Christy Fontanilia of FAS Bookkeeping and Tax Services. Welcome to another learning session. And this time it's about cash flow. So eight things to avoid for a healthy cash flow. I know with uh, dealing with, with a lot of business owners on a regular basis, I've seen um, the difficulty in terms of managing cash flow. And so um, I've decided to um, prepare this presentation to give you some pointers on what are the common pitfalls and how to avoid those for a healthy cash flow management for your business. So having a positive cash flow is really one of the most common challenges of uh, business owners, uh, particularly those that are just starting out, right? Um, so this is really something that is a real problem for a lot of business owners. So how do you avoid those common mistakes that small business owners make? First one is having no clear written business plan. It may sound intimidating in terms of business plan, but it can be as simple as really having um, a goal for the business. So you can start with having a revenue increase year by year as your first goal. And then uh, with that as a starting point, you can um, think of what are the assets that you need to purchase or investments that you need to make in terms of like digital marketing or advertising to be able to achieve that revenue growth. And having those information and starting to think about it, then you can come up with um, sort of a financial projection and what it's going to look like um, in terms of the cash inflow and also the cash outflow and uh, the bottom line for your business. So it doesn't have to be um, 30 pages of a business plan. It can be as simple as I said, starting with your revenue goals year by year, like over three years or five years, and then start thinking about what you need in order to uh, support that revenue growth. The next one is setting up the chart of accounts incorrectly. This may sound so uh, fundamental, but there's just a lot of common mistakes in setting up the chart of accounts. This is normally what you set up in your accounting system, for example, using QuickBooks Online. So when asked about the chart of accounts, like what is a chart of accounts? Chart of accounts is really a listing of all the different categories for your assets, liabilities, equity, and then on the profit and loss or income statement, you have the revenue, the cost of goods sold, operating expenses, and then net profit or net loss. So on the chart of accounts, what's really important is making sure that your uh, buckets of expenses are categorized correctly. So you get a better sense of where you're spending the most and is there a way and you can better manage those costs and that's really a starting point on really looking into your financial information analyzing it and taking action to reduce costs or maximize profit so setting up the chart of accounts correctly will help your business generate a meaningful profit and loss and uh, profit and loss statement for your business which is more giving you the financial information on how you can better manage your business. The third one is improperly classifying the cost of goods sold and operating expenses. So this is really very important because if you have someone with no accounting background just really handling uh, the bookkeeping of your business, then the cost of goods sold may not be uh, properly recorded. Instead, it will just show as part of all the other expenses. So for the cost of goods sold, what's important here is really identifying what, what your cost of goods sold is because that would help you understand if you're making a profit, a gross margin uh, with providing when you're providing that product or service. So if, for example, if you're in a plumbing business, then your cost of goods sold, which is really the direct cost of um, you incur 
when you provide that product or service. So if you're in a plumbing business, you got a call, you send someone to um, check on that job and you also have materials and supplies that you need uh, to be able to complete the job. So the direct cost there are your direct materials and supplies and also your labor costs. So that should not be uh, recorded just as an operating expense. It should be recorded uh, as part of the cost of goods sold because that would allow you to really determine um, what is your gross margin for that particular job. So if you have a $500 job, less your material cost and your labor cost, then that's your gross margin. An example, if you have a gross margin of 200, would that be enough to cover all your other operating expenses? So if your COGS is 450 and your sales or revenue is 500, you've got 50, then it's probably not gonna be enough to cover for your all other expenses. That's why it's very important to separate, to classify correctly the direct materials and direct labor costs so you can really monitor your gross margin. Pricing issues due to inaccurate cost accounting, that's really kind of related also when it comes to the properly recording and tracking your cost of goods sold. Because when you know what's your true cost, what's your true direct cost, then that would help you in the determining what should be your pricing. Of course, the pricing is also driven by the market rate, but it helps to understand what's really your, your pricing, which is based off on how much is really the cost in providing that product or service plus certain markup. That's normally should be your, your pricing. But if you don't know your cost, your direct cost, then it's kind of hard to really determine what is a profitable pricing for, for your product or service. So it's really important to know what your true cost is. Uncontrolled or unmonitored spending. So again, this is another one of the um, key challenges as well in terms of managing a business, uh, uncontrolled or unmonitored spending. It helps if you're looking at your financials, uh, financial report on a monthly basis and really doing like a ratio analysis. So that means how much is your COGS as a percentage of your revenue? How much is your advertising as a percentage of your revenue? How much is your rent or labor cost as a percentage of your revenue? So if you have um, say a target of 30% on your labor cost and you're looking at 40 or 50% of labor cost, then that would trigger you to look into uh, what are the things that you can do to better manage your cost and you end up not having unmonitored or uncontrolled spending there. So first thing is to have transparency of what you're spending, how much you're spending and as a percentage of your revenue, which is more your performance indicators or budget. And from there, you can identify what needs to be done. And to add a point on this is, it's a good idea to define a dollar or establish a dollar threshold that will trigger you to review, to determine if the expenditure will provide the return on your investment. So for example, uh, a threshold of say uh, 2,500. So any expenditure that's over 2500 will trigger you to really review it just to make sure that there is an analysis of return on investment for that particular expenditure. Now, here is the, the break-even point. So having no idea of business break-even point. In fact, I've heard that the new break-even point is 10%, not zero. So the break-even point is the point with no profit or no loss. And so that means you're just breaking even. No, you're not, you're not incurring any profit. You're not also incurring any loss. And this is normally the situation for a startup business. It's good to know what's your break-even point and really to just accept that on the first year. But after the first year, then your target should not be breaking even. Your target should 
you should be making a profit. The other uh, pitfall here or uh, one of the challenges too is not monitoring the past two receivables. So if you don't monitor your, your receivables and you don't collect on time, it's like financing the business of your customer. So you have to monitor closely and collect receivables on time. Billing for products or services are delayed. So if you're not sending the invoice on time, then that would delay the collection of the, the service or product that you provided. I mean, the things happen and there are some urgent things that you need to do. So um, this can be delayed, but if it becomes like a, a recurring problem, then it's probably better off being handled by, uh, let's say, uh, another bookkeeping firm that can help you with billing your customer on time. So to summarize, the bottom line here to better manage your cash flow is to prepare a simple business plan that's like your roadmap to success, establish a good accounting system, um, not only establishing a good accounting system, but really um, looking into those uh, financial reports that you can generate out of the good accounting system to help you understand what's going on in your business and better manage your business, identify opportunities and also identify areas for improvement to better manage your costs or improve your profit. And then finally, bill your customers on time and collect on time don't finance their business. So again, this is Christy Fontanilia of FAS Bookkeeping and Tax Services. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.